All right. So if we're talking about Millikan's experiment, we've got a few oil droplets, each of them with a force due to gravity acting on them. But if, if they find themselves between two parallel charged plates, they're also going to have some other force acting on them as well. Now, we've said that it could be that you have one force acting up very strong, one force acting up same as gravity, one force being weaker than gravity, and one force maybe even being down. And what was suggested by the class was that this one here must have greater electrostatic force than the force due to gravity because it must be an electrostatic force that's pulling it up. This one here must have an equal electrostatic force to the force due to gravity. This one has, has to have a lesser electrostatic force than the force due to gravity. And this one must have an electrostatic force that's going downwards. So that means that if we call this guy A, we call this guy B, this guy C, and this guy D, then A must be negative, B must be negative, C must be negative, and D must be positive since it's being repelled away from the top plate. What about neutral? Well, we haven't talked about neutral, but what would happen to neutral would be that... Uh, there wouldn't be a... Well, you'd have an equal amount of force up as down, and the force of gravity would be the only remaining force that wasn't cancelled out. So we're not going to consider the, the neutral charged scenario. But each of these oil droplets has a different charge on them, different magnitude of charge anyway. And we could say that this guy is greatest. This guy would be the least among, among the negatives. And the other one would be halfway in between somehow. Now how do you charge the plates? You have to have some voltage source, some... some uh, power supply. So this is a voltmeter that we have over here, but we may indicate that there's a voltage source by having an indicator of a cell there partway in between somehow powering this charged plate system. And what you guys told me was that if we want this thing to hover, then what we'd be claiming is that the force to gravity is equal to the electrostatic force. Fg is equal to Fe. Now what we claimed last day was, well actually we claimed this a long time ago, Fg is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. That's like unit one kind of stuff, maybe unit two, certainly grade 11. And we said last day that for charged plates, the electrostatic force is equal to the electric field intensity that's between the plates times the charge. And we said if we wanted to find the electric field intensity, then we need to be able to measure, using a voltmeter for example, the voltage between two plates with a, a separation or a gap of R. So from here to here would be your R value, or delta R. Okay, so here's the hypothesis. If I could get Fg to equal Fe, says Millikan, then what could I figure out about the charge of a, a, a droplet? Yeah? Would you want to isolate Q and like, or EQ equals MAG? Yeah, it seems like I should be able to get some isolation going on here. So let's, you know, what the heck, let's sub these guys in. Sub our, our values in. So FG, we'll call it equation one. FE, we'll call it equation two. And F, or, and equation three will be uh, electric field intensity times delta V over R. So I'm going to start up over here. And I'm going to sub in equations 1 and 2. Once I've got equation 1 and 2 subbed in, I'd like to, love the background sound effects, sub in equation 3. And equation three is just going to be the, the electric field in terms of uh, the voltage and the gap distance between the two plates. So mass times acceleration to gravity equals delta V times Q over R. Now what we claimed was that using all these, well, let's go make sure. Can you measure the mass of an oil droplet directly? Uh, not directly, maybe. You're not going to get an oil droplet like some oil droplet from a, from a perfume bottle or something like that that you can put on a scale. But what you could do is you could say, all right, I can find its mass by talking about, is it density times volume, density over volume? How do you do that? Um, yeah, so volume and 
density times volume. Okay, and if I wanted to find the density, well, density might is just going to be some number. Um, may vary depending on the the actual oil that we use, but the volume would be four thirds pi r squared or pi r cubed, rather. Yeah. Couldn't you just say that acceleration would cancel out the mass because wouldn't acceleration be zero? Oh, it's acceleration to gravity, so it's nine point oh. eight one. But the the mass could be calculatable. That's all we're saying. Okay. So if I wanted to actually find out the charge of an oil droplet that's suspended between two plates, that would be when the Fg is equal to Fe, or even if not suspended, but traveling at a constant velocity, so not accelerating, having a zero net force. Yeah? Where's the black square covering part of the equation? Oh, sorry. We'll be in the recording, but you're right. Right now there is. Um, I can get QL by itself. Mag times the distance between the two plates. Remember, R is the distance between the two plates, not the distance between a pair of charges or something like that. Over delta V is equal to the Q value. What's that? Well, we don't know the M value since we don't know the density of a specific sample of oil. I'm just saying that it's findable. And we could figure out what the radius is for a, an oil droplet if experimentally, oopsie, if experimentally we set up some sort of a, a millimeter scale in the background of this scenario. And as I, I said before, look at the whole thing with your eyeball through a microscope. Okay, and, that, and that's really um, closer to the setup that Millikan used. Had an oil oil droplet sprayer, like a perfume bottle, spraying out oil droplets. And as they came out of the oil droplet sprayer, they received a charge. And then with a microscope mounted eyepiece, was able to look at those oil droplets to see when they hung, not quite suspended freely in midair, between two charged plates, he was able to see what would happen with them motion wise. And the ones that accelerated upwards must have had a negative charge, strong negative charge. The ones that accelerated downwards either had a deficit of electrons that didn't, or not a definite deficit, a, a surplus of electrons that didn't allow their force, electric force to overcome gravity, or they had a positive charge, which caused them to be accelerated downwards. But the ones that either stayed at a constant velocity or hovered must have had an equal electrostatic force to the, the gravitational force. And that's what we're concerned about, because that sets up an equation that we can solve some values for. In any case, he was able to find the charge able to find the charge that must have been present on each of those uh, suspended or constant velocity oil droplets. So that's kind of a nice thing. I mean, calculate that charge, I mean, it'll be calculated in coulombs, but something interesting came up. He kept on finding Q values, and that's a fine thing to do, but as he came up with all these different Q values, we call them Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, blah, blah, blah. Lots and lots of Q values. Kind of something interesting happened. He noticed that each of them was divisible by the same number, which is kind of a neat thing. They were all, they all happened to be multiples of the same value. And so he said, well, the charge on any oil droplet, any object for that matter, he's sort of extrapolating, extrapolating here, if they're all multiples of the same value, then we might as well just use an integer times that value and say that everything has a charge that's an integer multiple of a certain elementary charge value. It was actually, I mean, he was really on a hunt for the value of the elementary charge. That was really the, the purpose of the experiment, was to find the value of some elementary charge. Because people are talking about maybe charge being like a fluid, you know, like the ether from from special relativity, like it was some sort of an in indivisible fluid that you sort of flowed from one object to another. And we talk about, you know, in electrostatics from grade nine, when you take some fur and you rub it against a rod and blah, 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 somehow some charge gets on there. His hypothesis was that it wasn't just some indivisible sort of fluid that, that flowed around from one subject to another, but that it was the transfer of specific particles. And each specific particle had some elementary charge. Mm -hmm. And so, Every charge in the universe, or every charged object, has a charge that's a, a integer multiple of that elementary charge, sort of a special charge. Yeah? Um, so, so E represents the elementary charge? 
Yeah, the elementary charge, or the charge of an electron. And <laughs> E is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And we talked about that in a previous lesson, but it's, it's good to throw out there. And as it turns out, all of these values, now his, his uh, actual results may not have been this accurate, but as it turns out, all of these values were some multiple of 1.602 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs. Yeah? That's 19. 19, yeah. 19. Oops, sorry, covered up by the black square again. Okay. All right, Millikan's experiment.